All right, Mark, our next question is from Camille, and she wants to know about liver cleansing. Hi, Dr. Hyman. My name is Camille, and your podcast has helped me immeasurably. Can you please advise the best liver cleanse to use on a daily basis? Thank you. Thank you so much for that question, Camille. Uh, It's really important because we all need to learn how to love our livers. They do a lot of work for us. They clean our blood. They keep us healthy. And when they don't work, we get sick. And uh, people think that you know, unless you have liver failure, it's fine, which is not true. The liver needs a lot of support to do its work. And I know this personally because I had mercury poisoning and I had to take care of my liver if I wanted to get better. The liver requires a lot of support to do its job of detoxification. And also, unfortunately, we are in a sea of toxins. So what is the worst toxin now affecting the liver? You might say pesticides, you might say industrial chemicals, you might say heavy metals, and you would be wrong. (laughs) The biggest problem affecting the liver is sugar. It's the number one cause of liver disease today in America. In fact, it's the number one cause of liver transplants. Drew, I don't know if I ever told you this story, but I went to a conference on childhood obesity. It was maybe, maybe, maybe eight years ago. And there was a doctor there who was chatting with in the hall. I'm like, hey, what do you do? He says, well, I'm a, I'm a pediatric uh, 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 gastroenterological surgeon. I'm like, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> he said, oh, well, we do liver transplants. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? Liver transplants for what? He said, we're now seeing teenagers with cirrhosis of the liver from fatty liver, from eating sugar and soda. And I'm like, you're kidding. This is just horrific. We see kids as little as five years old with what we call non-alcoholic steatohepatosis and fatty, which just basically means fatty liver. And, 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 and eventually ends up with scarring the liver and cirrhosis. We think it's alcoholism. It's not. It's sugar and starch. So this is the biggest driver of, of a toxic liver. So the first thing you need to take care of your liver is really dramatically cut down or cut out starch and sugar. Obviously, alcohol is a problem. You next want to make sure you're avoiding as many toxins as possible. So get rid of the toxins in your food. Obviously, processed food for sure, additives, preservatives, but also pesticides and chemicals in food. I am on the board of the Environmental Working Group, and it's important to check which vegetables you're eating that are contaminated. For example, strawberries, which I love, the worst. I would never eat a non-organic strawberry. It's number one on the Environmental Working Group's list of most contaminated fruits and vegetables. You can Google it, ewg.org. You can find the dirty dozen list, stay away from those. And then there's a clean 15. So if you don't eat organic avocados or bananas, it's okay, right? Save some money there. But but for sure, if you're having celery, if you're having nectarines, if you're having strawberries, you do not, you do not want to eat those if they're not organic. Next is clean up your house. You know, house your house is one of the biggest sources of toxins, both indoor air pollution from off-gassing of VOCs and chemicals, whether it's paint or furniture, carpets. I mean, there's so much plastics and chemicals out there. So try to use natural materials in your house. And also household cleaning products are, and, and if you don't, if you can't make sure you redo everything in your house, get an air filter and clean, clean your air with a HEPA filter. Uh, we use one called Air Doctor, which is really great. Next, I would say you want to make sure you are using household cleaning products that are not making you sick. I mean, think about it. When you read read these products, if ingested, go immediately to the hospital. You know, you don't want those in your house. (laughs) So the Environmental Working Group has, what are the safe household cleaning products? Skincare products. They have a wonderful uh, database called Skin Deep where you can see what are you putting on your face? Your lipstick has got lead in it? Well, don't use it. If your topical creams have parabens and plastics in them, don't use it. You're absorbing it. If you wouldn't eat it, you shouldn't put it on your skin. Uh, and next, and next, you want to make sure, obviously, the fish and the meat you're eating has low mercury and toxins. And there's, again, guides on the EWG.org. So it's a great resource to lower your exposures. The next thing I would do is make sure you're eating foods that upregulate all your detox pathways. So the most important categories of foods are the brassica or cruciferous vegetable family, which is broccoli, collards, kale, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, that whole family. And the garlic and onions and family. 
And so I would eat those on a regular basis. For tonight, I'm having broccolini with garlic. So I do it pretty much every day. I make sure I have these foods. Next, you can actually start to do kind of more fancy stuff. You can have green juices, celery juice, watercress juice, cilantro juice. I had a, I had a guy who had heavy metals and he just juiced cilantro and had a cup of cilantro juice every day. And cilantro is a great detoxifier that helped his liver flush out the metals and he got rid of his metals. You also want to eat herbs and spices like rosemary, curcumin, which like turmeric, which for curries, uh, you want to make sure you have uh, things like rosemary, lemon, lemon peel, you know, we throw away the lemon peel, but if you get organic lemons, you can, you can kind of, I like to, to kind of uh, grate the lemon peel and put it in salads. It's great with like my kale, pine nuts, a lemon peel, lemon juice, olive oil, salt and pepper. It's delicious. Uh, that's why I like summer because we grow fresh kale. It's really good with a fresh kale. And then once you've kind of upgraded your diet, include all the phytochemicals. And I'm, I'm literally just like touching the surface. There's whole books written about this. I just got back from Ikaria, which is in Greece, uh, one of the blue zones. And every morning, they and all day actually, they had this stuff called wild sage tea. And I'm like, wow, what is this stuff? Why do they live to be 100 years old? Why do they have the longest lived population in the world? I'm like, is it anything to do with the tea? Well, I think it does because when I looked up the tea and the phytochemical content, it was full of something called epigalactic catechins, which are these incredible compounds that are detoxifying, that are anti-inflammatory, that help your immune system, that activate all these longevity switches. In fact, there's some theory that, that, and in fact, there's data on this, that green these catechins in green tea and also in this wild sage tea upregulate glutathione and help your body detoxify, which is the main detoxifier. Then after you've done all that, obviously exercise, is important, making sure your gut's healthy is important, making sure you're sweating. I call it the three P's, poop, pee, uh, pee poop, and perspire. You, know, you want to make sure you're flushing your system, lots of water, lots of sweating, saunas. I mean, I did hot yoga. I was just in New York. I, I, do, I love hot yoga. Kind of flushes your system out, uh, moves your lymphatic circulation. All that's great for detox. And then lastly, you want to kind of beef up your supplement regimen. So a good multivitamin. The reason, and the reason is, uh, oh, before I go to the supplements, I just want to kind of loop back to the food. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize how important amino acids are uh, from protein. So protein is so important for detoxification because a lot of the pathways, and I'm not going to bore you with all the fancy chemical names, but a lot of the pathways in the liver to get rid of toxins require amino acids. So you have to have a good complement of amino acids. And if you're just eating plant foods, you might not get those. So important to make sure you're getting enough of the right amino acids. And then, and then supplements. So what should you be taking? A good multi is important. But then there's a number of ones that are really key. Methylation, B12, folate, B6, very critical. Zinc, very critical. Selenium, important for the liver detoxification and boosting glutathione. Magnesium. So you want to make sure you have adequate levels of these nutrients. Then there's all the herbs like milk thistle and other compounds that can really be helpful. Curcumin, uh, artichoke. Uh, um, and there's a lot of these compounds, elagic acid and pomegranate. So there's all these things that we can use as part of our diet to upregulate these pathways that are phytochemicals. And then there's, there's the supercharged ones like glutathione boosting supplements like N-acetylcysteine, which works so well, the government wants to ban it, <laughs> which makes me laugh. You know, anything works too good. They want to turn it into a drug. I'm like, no, it's just like, it's just a supplement. And then, uh, lipoic acid also is very important. And, and there's a host of other things, but those are, those are the main things I focus on. And I, and I, I've learned to incorporate these. It sounds like a lot, but I learned to incorporate these into my life every day. This morning I had a green juice. I, I make sure I, I took a sauna today. I have one in my house, a, a steam. I, I'm having broccolini and garlic tonight for dinner. I'm taking my supplements with, with N-acetylcysteine, lipoic acid, and my methylating supplements. So it's, it's, I just sort of work it into my life. It sounds like a lot, but once you kind of learn how your body works, you, you kind of just do it automatically. All right, Mark, super robust answer. Really great uh, and thorough um, action items that you shared over there. If you love that last video, you're going to love the next one. Check it out here. So I, I always make sure that I, I and I, I take quality time. And, and the meditation thing is super portable. So I do a kind of meditation. It's like a version of a Vedic mantra meditation. So you don't need to be like in a quiet room and like I can do it on an airplane, I can do it in the back of an Uber, I can do 